Hello YouTube! Welcome to episode 5 of my Digital Aquarium Controller Series. Today we're going to look at the build for the AC Power Control Systems. Right off the bat here, I want to provide a warning. Household line current is no joke. Be careful, take precautions. If a mistake is made, you could be injured or killed, your equipment could be damaged, your house could burn down. I'm not a licensed electrician. Here thou be dragons, follow at your own risk. Okay, that out of the way, let's get to it. We have lights, heaters, and pumps we want to control. To do that, we need to build a device that'll take signals from the Adreno and use it to switch on or off the power. For this task, I'm gonna use these inexpensive and easy to find relay boards. There are two types. The standard relays are least expensive and can handle both AC and direct currents. The drawback is that they're mechanical, so they make a click when they activate and they'll eventually wear out. The solid state relays, or SSRs, are purely electrical. They won't wear or make noise like the mechanical, however, they're a bit more expensive, and they only work for moderately high alternating current. They'll be used to control the wavemaker pumps. Because of the risks involved, the AC components must be securely fastened into a solid enclosure. I'd planned to build one, but I found this power strip at the flea market that was perfect. It uses standard outlets and is just wide and long enough to mount a relay board in when the top unit is removed. It also has a switch, a fuse, power filter circuit, and indicator lights. Bonus! For the two-plug SSR unit, I'll use a standard outlet box that you can just buy at your big orange hardware store. Off camera, I begin preparing the power strip. I cut free and remove the top phone outlet. Then I stripped a bit of 12 gauge solid core electrical wire. I soldered a four-way pigtail together. Remove the wires between the switch and the outlets and I soldered the pigtail wire to the switch. This will be the power in for the relays. Then I ran a wire to each half of both outlets. This will connect the output of the relays. Now I need to drill some holes to mount the relay board and run the signal cable. I start with a small bit, just to drill pilot holes. Then I move up to a bit just slightly larger than the mounting screws. I have fitted the relay board with PC style plastic standoffs. This is what the screws will connect to. Finally I move up to a quarter inch bit to cut the hole for the Cat5 signal cable. I hot glue a piece of plastic in place to cover the open holes. Then I fit a relay board in place and secure it with four screws. Now I connect the power lines to the relays. The black wires are the power feed. They connect to the center screw of each relay. The red wires connect to the outlets. I connect them to the normally open terminal for each relay. That's to the left of each power feed wire, in this view. Connected in this way, the outlets will be off, unless I turn them on with the controller.
To wire the SSR relays, I want a separate plug, so I use an old extension cord. I cut it a few feet from the plug and strip the ends. Then I cut four sections from the scrap to use as jumpers, stripping each of them also. Finally, I note and mark the wire that connects to the fat prong on the plug. This is the one that I'm going to switch. On the outlet, I break the copper strip that connects this side so that the two plugs can be controlled separately. This was done for the outlets in the power strip also, but off camera. The power cord is fed into the outlet box and knotted to keep it from pulling out. Then I connect two shorter wires to the marked wire of the power cord and make a pigtail to feed power to the relays. One of the pigtails is connected to each screw terminal of each relay. And then I bolt a second wire to the remaining terminal of each SSR. Each of these wires is connected to one screw on the outlet on the side that the tab was broken off of. Then the final wire from the plug is screwed to the other side of the outlet. Once the outlet is connected, a bit of electrical tape is applied, just as a precaution. Now to connect the signal wires for the SSR. I cut a 9-foot section of Cat5 cable to connect from the controller to the power strip, and then 2-foot section to the relay signal from the power strip for the SSR relay box. I strip back the sheathing to expose the wires. Looking at my notes, I'll only be using the blue and orange pairs for the SSR relay, so the other two pairs are pulled down and twisted away. Then I feed the wire out of the back of the box. Free up the four wires and strip about a quarter inch of insulation off of each. Now I connect the orange wire, which is the DC 5 volts, to the screw terminal marked VCC. Next to that, I connect the orange and white wire for ground. Then the blue wire, which will be pin 34 on the Adreno, connects to the terminal for SSR relay number 1. And finally the blue and white wire, pin 35, to relay number 2. Once all of the wires are connected, it all goes into the box. Screw down the outlet and then add the plate cover. This component is done. Now we need to do a tad bit of soldering. Here you see my nifty soldering station. It was a birthday present from the family. They built it for me. The link to the video that inspired them and directed them is in the description. Check it out. Back to the soldering. The blue pair of signal wires need to bypass this power strip and go straight into the SSR. 
and the orange pair for 5 volt and ground needs to go to both components. So here I connect those as needed, tethering the long and short sections of Cat5 together. Each solder joint is protected with a piece of heat shrink. Then the whole cable is secured with a few larger pieces. A few more touches of solder to connect the DC power line extension. Then one final large piece of heat shrink, and this cable is ready and looking good. The mechanical relay board has a pin header to connect the data lines, unlike the screw terminal connectors of the SSR board. So I crimp pins onto each of the wires. I covered this process in detail back in episode 3. Then I push the pins into the connector, making sure they're in the right order. Orange to VCC, orange and white to ground, green to relay 1 and to pin 30 on the Adreno, green and white to relay 2, pin 31, brown to 3 for 32, and finally, brown and white for relay 4 for pin 33. Once the connector is all set, I plug it into the board. Then I smooth out the wires and use some cable ties to secure the Cat5 cable to the case. I bolt the power strip case back together, and now it's time to test. This is just a quick and dirty test. I connect the power wires to 5 volts, and then push each of the 6 data lines into the breadboard. Then I plug the power strip and the outlet box into the wall. I use my studio lights as guinea pigs by plugging them into different outlets as I test. Now as I connect any data line to ground with a jumper, it activates the relay and turns on the light. Everything checks out. Woohoo! Finally, off camera, I add the connectors to the end of the data line I was just testing, so it can connect to the distribution board that I covered last episode. All done. I hope you found this useful. If you like this, please click like and subscribe to see more. Until next time, thanks for watching.